So we're looking at how microbes can impact the formation of minerals in the subsurface for applications such as contaminant remediation and groundwater, or actually also things like strengthening soils. One of the contaminants of concern for DOE is called strontium-90. And strontium-90 um, is a problem because it can cause bone cancers. And it's a byproduct of uranium by process, uranium processing. So it is produced at nuclear uh, f research facilities as well as nuclear energy facilities. Um, and it's because it is uh, mobile, that is, it moves with water, it's of concern when it gets into water sources. Yes, we are talking about protecting the water resources that we have. In, the, in eastern Idaho, for example, the, the primary drinking water source is the Snake River Plain Aquifer. And methods that we have been researching could help to uh, maintain the quality of that drinking water. And the th nice thing about this particular immobilization, the idea of immobilization for strontium-90 is that it's a radionuclide it decays. So after 29 years, that, that is the half-life of strontium-90. After 29 years, you have half the amount of the original strontium-90 that you had. And if you can, so if you can keep the strontium-90 immobile for, say, 300 years, which is, it sounds like a long time, but it's really a very short time, geologically speaking. Um, that's 10 half-lives. That means that more than 99.9% .9 of your strontium-90 will have decayed away. I think we could consider it relatively benign. That is, we're not adding um, toxic chemicals. Um, we're talking about, like as I said, urea. It's the most commonly used fertilizer. I mean, there, there are issues that people will bring up that uh, urea produces ammonium, which actually other organisms then can produce to produce nitrate. And nitrate is a, is a contaminant of concern. It's certainly a contaminant of concern here in Idaho um, due to agricultural operations as well as especially feedlots. Um, there's a lot of nitrate contamination getting into groundwater. Um, but I think that our research thus far indicates that our particular remediation approach should not cause a problem with respect to nitrate. But that is also one of the things that we look at to make sure that um, if we go out and do this remediation that we're not causing another problem. The types of remediation that Br Brady and I are both interested in, I, I don't think of it as a Pandora's box, because really what we're doing is we're, we're taking advantage of processes that are already occurring with naturally occurring bacteria and naturally occurring elements, and um, in some cases the contaminants are not naturally occurring, but that's the problem. Um, but I, I don't think that we're, we're just taking advantage of naturally occurring processes and trying to get it to occur at the rate and at the places where it's useful for us. So can we accelerate it to meet our goals as a society? Um, and so I'm, I'm actually not concerned about a Pandora's box with respect to these types of remediation approaches.